us. Join us as we follow the moon. Today, we're moving from the upper peninsula of Michigan into the lower peninsula of Michigan. And to do that, we go across the Mackinac Bridge, or the Mac as it's known up here. Five miles long, 200 feet high, and we thought we'd share with you the drive across there as we go into the lower peninsula of Michigan. Thanks. Now, as you're coming across the Upper Peninsula, we're going to turn into Interstate 75 right here. And just as soon as you get onto Interstate 75, you'll see the bridge ahead of you. And what a sight. Is it magnificent or yeah. what? Now, all tolls, both directions, are paid on the north end of the bridge. And the tolls are $2 per axle on cars. So a car goes across for $4 one way and trucks are five dollars per axle so a motorhome two axles pulling a car is fourteen dollars look at that sky it was a beautiful yeah. day when we went across there now keep in mind as you're going across that bridge the speed limit is 20 mile per hour on loaded trucks 45 mile an hour on all other vehicles they look like they're going a lot faster well, we, are, we do have this sped up, and you can see the exact time there. There, there is construction on both sides of the bridge, and this little car in front of me decided 11 mile an hour was a good cruising speed. So it was kind of holding up us and everybody behind us. Well, we had more time to really enjoy the view. That's right. <laughs> now, the metal work on the inside two lanes are done so that air can go through the bridge and the bridge has a wind rating of 150 mile an hour so it's pretty stable and pretty sturdy it is the uh, 26th longest main span of any suspension bridge and it's the longest suspension bridge in the western hemisphere And here we are. The first place you go when you come south across the bridge is Mackinac City. And yes, it is spelled differently than the other Mackinac's, the bridge, the island, but it's all pronounced the same. It was a cute town. It was, and it's got uh, parking along both sidewalks plus a row of parking down through the middle so you can park an RV downtown. We decided we would grab a quick lunch at Wienerlicious. <laughs> okay, so this is a Mackinac dog, which is a bacon wrapped hot dog with cheese sauce, and then I put jalapenos on it also. And this or, is a bratwurst. And we got the peppers and onions on that. And then these are their waffle fries. And we'll let you know in a minute how it all turned out. And we didn't eat that fast either. Okay, so other than being messy, how is it? <laughs> yes, it's very messy, but it's really good. <laughs> this is too, I wasn't sure about how the bacon and the, but the bacon is nice on it with the cheese and the jalapenos fries are great we all know that bacon makes everything that's right and the Mackinac dog from what I could see being inside was probably the big seller I think they did yeah. half a dozen of them while I was in there the fries you can get with cheese or you can get with chili and cheese we just got them regular but they're really good and what did you say the name of this was Wienerlicious Wienerlicious mm -hmm. Now next, just around the corner from that, is the old Mackinac Point Lighthouse. And this lighthouse was used from 1890 up through 1957. It stands 49 foot tall. Now it's a historical site. Now that big tall bridge we went over, it's got a 10 foot 6 underpass. So you have to watch when you're going from there over to the old fort. That's an 18th century fur trading fort. Next up was McGalpin Point, and McGalpin Point is known for their lighthouse 
and the Magalpan Point rock that was used by the early French as a marker. Now next up is Gaylord, Michigan. We actually were staying in Gaylord, Michigan at the time, but Gaylord became famous around the 20th of May this uh, year, 2022, for a major F3, EF3 tornado that went through there. It was 20 minutes on the ground, 16.6 miles long going across the town. Level buildings, shopping centers, completely destroyed the Nottingham Forest Mobile Home Park. But it also took out some big expensive homes also. Yes, it did. It, it didn't pay any attention to what you were living in. It walked right through town. Yeah. But the downtown missed damage by about two blocks yeah it was amazing and the downtown is beautiful if you're in the area please support this town because they need everyone's help in getting themselves back together yeah um it is a bavarian inspired town and it's located on the 45th parallel which they're very proud of that's halfway between the north pole and the equator there you can see some of the bavarian style and the hanging baskets, the flowers in that town were just beautiful. Yes, they were. Now we decided lunch at El Patron might be good. The red umbrellas make everything look red. So we they look red. <laughs> yeah, we do look red in these pictures. So forgive the color. Huge menu. Started with chips and salsa, margarita. So when you come to a little Bavarian town, what would you expect to have for lunch? Mexican. <laughs> That's right. We're at El Patron, and we're getting started on some really good Mexican food. Uh, so far, it's just been the, the margarita, the raspberry tea, the guacamole and the salsa, but so far everything's been living up to its reputation. It looks good, very good. How's enchiladas? Oh, how's enchiladas? Come right here. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, thank you. So, Kathy, what do you think? Oh, I think mine's really good. How about yours? Mine's great. We're still waiting on it to come back for the tamale. We'll let you know on that in a moment, but. So far, so good. And next up in Gaylord, right in town, is their elk viewing area. And there's a, a large native elk population in the area, but they've created this viewing area with 40 elk in it. Uh, beautiful uh, males, quite a few females, and babies. They have a, a several of these white albino elk and then we'll also show you here some that are the babies with the spots on them. I'd never seen them like that before. They were beautiful. It's right in town, real easy to get to. Now next up we went to Charlevoix. And Charlevoix is over on the left side of the, the glove. And again, beautiful downtown great shops along one side of the road and their little bay along the other side and park and a music amphitheater and they really keep that downtown hopping. Now the inlet from the uh, uh, lake, they've got a uh, bridge. Yes, Help me out. It is a bridge. Yeah. Drawbridge. The there draw we go. Bridge. But they are known for their mushroom houses. And these were so cute thatched roofs. Look how thick that thatch is. They're really impressive. They also have the uh, Charlevoix Lighthouse, the South Pier Lighthouse. And that was uh, right outside a great park. Maggie loved this park though. Oh, she did. The Charlevoix Dog Park. She was getting her running on. Yes, she was. They've got several large dog parks here in this complex for different sizes of dogs. They've got a walking track and great grass, she said. Yes. Very soft. Yes, very soft. And she got wild. 
<laughs> now this little town, the, the people in this area of the state really enjoy their outdoor spaces. And this is the Depot Beach Park. It's the old railroad depot and they've taken the side where the depot is and put in beautiful landscaped gardens. And do keep in mind, these were shot in uh, mid-June. So things were just starting to, to pop. They're also home of the Ironton Ferry. And that ferry holds four cars. It's the shortest ferry uh, in the, according to the Guinness Book of World Records. It's $3 per car for the ride. Next up, we're in Traverse City. And Traverse City has another great downtown. Yes, we saw that, Oh yeah, the quaint, just happy places to wander. Yeah, and there are a lot of older, kind of historical type buildings, but very well preserved and taken care of. They appreciate their history. They sure do. We did lunch at the filling station. This again is another train depot, but it's been turned into a little restaurant and microbrewery. Ales on the Rails is their microbrewery and the seating goes all the way along the tracks. Their flatbread pizzas are what we decided to try. They said they're 12 inch and I'm thinking like the 12 inch rectangular ones. Well, you'll see what they turned out to be. So what do you think? It's pretty good. Yeah, it's a flatbread pizza. It's more like just a thin pizza to me. Yeah. But we got the uh, one that Kathy has on her plate is the one off the top rack. And that is the Stoker. And that's got the Italian sausage on it. It's their home, homemade Italian sausage. It's got a little bit of a kick to it. It's pretty good. The one I've got here is the Spartan and it has the prosciutto and the pepperoni. And mushrooms. And mushrooms. And they're both really good. We've yeah. been switching off between yeah. the two. And we forgot to tell you about the beverages and since this is a brewery, they've got great things if you want brewed beverages or non-brewed. Kathy did a... Rhubarb lavender. And what'd you think? It's good. And I have always been a big one for the uh, raspberry wheat beers. And that's what I did the first time, was the uh, raspberry wheat. It's a little bit more strong of raspberry than what I'm used to. I think they said 200 pounds of, either 200 or 260 pounds of raspberries added to the mix. So it's very strong in raspberry, more than what I'm used to. The other number, the either 200 or 250, was in the peach. The peach is absolutely amazing. This, this is a winner. We had a nice time sitting there relaxing along the rails, but then we took off out the peninsula. And Traverse City has an 18 mile long peninsula out into Grand Traverse Bay. It is full of cherry trees and it's full of vineyards and wineries. Beautiful countryside. Yes, it was. And like we said, wineries everywhere. The views were great. You could see the water on either side, you know, now and then. And this winery had a beautiful view right from it. Yeah. Now, when you make the 18 mile drive to the end, you'll come to the Mission Point Lighthouse. And this dates back to 1870. And on the same property is the Hessler House, which is a log cabin, which was built in 1856. When you walk out to the lighthouse, you can see the beach. And then on your way back to the parking, you go right past the log cabin. You can actually detour back in there and look inside. You've got it to where you can walk just in the door. Next up is one of my favorites, Frankenmuth, Michigan. 
This was a spot I remember going to from Ohio back as a kid, but a lot has changed in the last 30 odd years. They've added a couple of new little shopping areas in the downtown. This is where the old brewery, I think it was a Genesee brewery was. And uh, it's got everything from beignets and donuts to shopping. There's a nice little dog and cat store. It was charming. And the waterfall goes down to where you can get aboard their paddle wheel boat that takes you through the waterways and around the covered bridge. That was one of my favorite. Now, one of the things that they're known for in that town are their two big restaurants, Zender's and the Bavarian Inn. We went to Zender's, they're right across the street from each other, they're actually owned by the same family. And they are known for their chicken dinners. They said up through, I believe it was 2004, they'd served 26 million chicken dinners. And they were good. Kathy did the chicken. I did a Reuben with their house-made kettle chips. It was a great lunch, but then it was time to walk and take a look at the sights. Now this is definitely a little German type town. There's cheese shops, fudge shops, all sorts of things that you can really get in trouble with. And clock shops. Yes. We could have gotten in trouble there. They had a really good little ice cream shop there too. Oh yes, they did. It had lavender, lemon, lemon ice cream. cream. Ooh. Now they also have a great little farmer's market on the north side of town. It's open on Wednesdays and Saturdays. They've got an indoor area as well as a lot of nice outdoor area. And you can take your dog. Yeah. Most of what we saw in Frankenmuth, and for that matter, most of the Lower Peninsula is very pet friendly. Yes, it is. And flowers everywhere. Now, this is one of the things Frankenmuth is probably most known for is Bronner's. Bronner's open 361 days a year, and they are the world's largest Christmas store. It's always Christmas when you're there. There's Wally Bronner, the founder of the company. And whether you're looking for ornaments of any particular theme, villages, Christmas trees, lights. They you, had it all. You name it, they had it. And they, they even had a whole section of ornaments that they would personalize for you. Even for camping. That's right. And there's that Jeep we've been looking for. <laughs> That nativity was oh, finished all the way around. Yes, it was. Now they've built this replica there of the uh, Silent Night Chapel from Austria. Now next up, and one of our last stops in Michigan, in the Lower Peninsula, was Holland, Michigan. And this was one of those places I visited when I was in the first grade of school. So. I had very few memories, but I did remember that. That's actually a Dutch uh, windmill that was disassembled and sent over to the United States and reassembled on top of that brick three-story base. You can see the line where they uh, had to uh, build it up because over there they're built on hills. And this one had the the milling has been closed over covid but they're just getting ready to start milling their own flour there again and they'll have that for sale there's great dutch uh gifts a lot of them imported from over in holland and again the landscaping oh, the flowers were yeah. beautiful we did miss their um uh, tulips, but we had seen plenty of tulips earlier in the year anyway. Yeah, we were, like I said, middle of June. We were a little bit past the tulip season. That didn't stop them from making it beautiful. 
Now, Windmill Island Gardens, besides the uh, windmill, has a great carousel that runs twice an hour, as does this. This is an actual Amsterdam street organ. Pretty fun to watch. Now there's lots of parks in this town too. This is called Tunnel Park. And uh, it has a tunnel that takes you out to the beach. That was really cool. Yeah, it was. Very pretty. And I'll tell you what, you can tell the people love the outdoors. They've been cooped up all winter and they can't wait to get outside. It's wonderful. Yep. Now this is Holland's Bay that comes in towards the town. And out here at Holland State Park, you not only have a great beach, but you have the big red lighthouse. It's only 32 foot tall, built in 1872, but it's the most photographed lighthouse in all of Michigan. Now we went to the downtown. Again, beautiful downtown and something that's kind of unique. They pipe hot water from their electrical plant under the streets and sidewalks downtown so they never ice over. I thought that was really kind of cool. Yeah, that is cool. You wouldn't want to miss the shopping there either. It was great. And beautiful buildings, well taken care of, restored, great shopping. But by now we were getting hungry, so we went over to the City Delicatessen. Most of the restaurants downtown have outdoor seating along the, the sidewalks and they're pet friendly. Kathy had a ham turkey avocado sandwich. It was I, hot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I had a, a great Southwest salad. Now this is windows on the waterfront. This is another one of their parks. And it's actually right across the water from the Windmill Island Gardens. So if you don't get a chance to make it to the gardens, you can still see the windmill from the park. And there were swans out there. Well, Kathy, we've had a great time in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. We came down through Mackinac Island, and now we've been across the Lower Peninsula of Michigan. What do you think? It was very different, but it's equally beautiful. Um, nice little quaint towns. Um, beautiful nature. Every area we've been to in Michigan has been totally different. Upper Peninsula was all focused on nature, and the Lower Peninsula is a lot more modern. Little but, quaint towns. Yeah, and a lot of gear towards the Dutch, the, the German, uh, the kind of European influence. So. Yes. We hope you've enjoyed what we brought to you from Michigan. If you have, leave us a thumbs up. We sure appreciate that. And if you haven't yet subscribed to our channel, please do so and ring that notification bell. That way you'll know when we have new videos coming out. And thank you for following us as we follow the moon. Thanks for watching today. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel. And be sure to ring the notification bell so you'll know when new videos come out. Don't forget to follow us on social media too.